All right, Holly, while they take another sidebar, it leads me to my next question, and I'll apologize in advance if I cut you off. It's only because they're coming back in and we want to hear what they say once they're back in court. But the other question I have is once they started questioning about um, it, but you had an attorney, didn't you? Could he not theoretically claim the attorney-client privilege to get out of answering some of those questions? Yes, he should. The prosecution's going down what I like to call a side street, one with no outlet. It's really not the point I think the prosecutor's trying to make. What I think has happened is that on direct examination, this defendant gave the prosecution uh, a ton of information or, or testified inconsistently. And now we see the prosecutor trying not only to stick to the script that the prosecutor had about crossing this defendant, but also uh, trying to incorporate all of the inconsistent statements that this defendant made when his attorney questioned him. The biggest of which was that now the defendant claims that he did not intend to shoot the gun. What a huge reveal. Um, I would come right out at swinging as a prosecutor on that one, but I, I can't wait to find out how this prosecutor handles that. But I think he, I think this prosecutor might be going down the wrong path on, on what the attorneys, uh, prior attorneys for this defendant did on which days. I think the question is, you had these attorneys, yes or no. You did not attend these dates, did you? You were looking for a third or fourth attorney to hire, and that's why you fled the state? I think these are sort of ancillary issues that uh, are probably important to hit for appellate reasons, but maybe not the most critical facts to dispute with this defendant. And I think they're clearly trying to establish that he's not credible, that the jury shouldn't believe him and should believe the defendant's wife instead. Let's go back to court. 